You want to see how these things work. You don't really understand that how something that heavy can fly through the air. And my grandfather was a navigator on P3 Orions for 23 years in the Navy. And he used to take me to air shows all the time along with my dad. And that really sparked my interest in um, how the planes worked and what went into making them and how to fly them. But when I was looking for my internship, I wanted to do something along those lines. I knew I was interested in that, but in the Charlottesville area, you can either go through the track of um, actual airports or, as I wanted to do, because I wanted to know how to build them, I wanted to do aerospace engineering. And that led me to um, Northrop Grumman. Yeah, it's, its office in Charlottesville is um, kind of major in the area. It's been around since the 80s. Um, Northrop Grumman started by making gyroscopes for the United States Navy for navigation. Um, They've been, they've been doing government contracts with them ever since. Uh, the original gyroscopes were kind of like the toys you guys play with. Basically, you spin the top really, really fast and the thing wants to stay up and down in one direction all the time. Um, whenever you change your position, it always wants to stay like this. There's a lot of physics that uh, go on within it, but it's a little bit too complicated to go into now. Um, this is how the original gyroscopes are, but They've changed a lot through the ages. Um, nowadays, they look something like this. It's not quite as exciting, it's just a box, but the technology that's inside of it is incredible. Um, whereas, it used to be that gyroscopes were mechanical, you would spin it and that, uh, that linear motion, that uh, rotation, would make it want to stay up and down. And when you would change, the position of it would change a little bit because it wants to keep it in that same position. So. The way you would navigate with it is you would log the change in that position and that would roughly translate to how your vessel is moving. Um, nowadays, they have something incredible. Um, it's actually made with lasers. Basically, they shoot two lasers from uh, two different directions and it goes around in a ring. And that uh, where they meet up is uh, recorded. And if your vessel changes position, the interface will change just a little bit in a measurable way so that you can actually see how much you're moving and it lets you get a more accurate reading of where you are in space. Um, the way that uh, ship gyroscopes works are there are three planes of motion. You've got your up and down plane, your left and right plane, and the plane that goes straight forward and backwards. There are actually three gyroscopes in these things that record those three planes of motion. Um, basically three different lasers that are facing the different directions and when you say turn left the interface will change slightly to the right in a measurable way and they used to have to do this with by hand um, which is what happened from 1940 up until the invention of computers that's actually <coughs> been the most major um, contribution to navigation um, is computers there's actually a computer inside of this that will log each one of those different translations and um, if you can actually see it on your interface up, a, um, up in the bridge of the ship. Um, now when I went to Northrop Grumman, I met with uh, these two men and they taught me all about this sort of stuff. I had zero idea what was going on with navigation. <laughs> I knew that, I knew how a plane flew, I knew uh, wind flows over the wing, creates downforce under the wing, and it propels it upwards. But um, these guys are both aerospace engineers involved with navigation. Uh, Mark Weinheimer, uh, the first man that I talked to, actually was, um, he's involved with integrating navigation throughout the entire ship. So what he does is he takes the input from the computer and then um, puts it up into the bridge and the ship can actually navigate itself. Uh, the biggest innovation now is that you can actually do autopilot systems on your ship, kind of like an airplane where you can set your airplane cruise and it will fly straight. Um, nowadays, they can um, input into the computer where they want to go and the ship will turn and find the most direct route to that place. Um, Charlie Owen is actually working on something a little bit more 
advanced. Um, right now he's working on fiber optic navigation, which is almost exactly like ring laser um, navigation, except um, there are coils of fiber optic cables, and it goes around many, many times, and that actually amplifies the accuracy of the navigation. Um, like, I think 100-fold, it's incredible. So, whereas before you would have a rough idea of where you are in space, now they know exactly where they are. They know within about an inch of where they are at all times. Um, so, that's actually what I did my paper on. I did how, in the early days, they used to um, get a rough estimate of how far they were going, and they would uh, measure based on the stars how they've turned. But nowadays, and up until nowadays, they have this technology. It's absolutely incredible. Um, but my uh, community service, I wanted to do something that kind of drummed up public interest in the aerospace fields, because I know a lot of people want to be doctors, and a lot of people, I don't know, want to go do cool stuff, but I think the coolest thing you can do is fly, um, learn about the aerospace fields, learn about aerospace engineering. Um, so what I did was I volunteered at my Civil Air Patrol Squadron, and I teach kids about aerospace technologies. I teach them how airplanes work and all that sort of thing. I also uh, worked at several air shows where basically the uh, airfields around this area are trying to promote public interest in airplanes and come out to see what the newest technology is, kind of like what my grandfather did to me when I was little. Um, whereas I got to see cool military airplanes that just flew amazingly, like so fast, it's incredible. Um, these guys are doing sm uh, smaller planes, kind of like this, which is a which is a little Cessna, Cessna 182, which is what private people normally fly. So what we did was um, we went out there, we um, handed out brochures, we helped out with moving the airplanes around and organizing people, and basically what we were trying to do was get more people interested. Um, for my legacy, I uh, got involved, or I actually have brochures going into the high school now, or I plan to, that um, hopefully get more kids involved with Civil Air Patrol. Civil Air Patrol is actually Air Force Auxiliary, uh, so that's the best way that you can get into the aerospace field. Get them interested young. Civil Air Patrol starts when you're about 12. You can volunteer for Civil Air Patrol, and um, they actually give you orientation rides. I think three orientation rides for each of their cadets, uh, where you can actually learn to fly, and they hand over the controls to you. So that's, that's what I did for my community service and my legacy. Um, tips for you younger governor school kids. It looks like a lot when you're getting started. It looks like there's a mountain of stuff that you have to do. But the best thing you can do is just go with the flow. Do what you need to do. Ride that wave. Um, <laughs> basically, take what you need to do in little tiny pieces and let it take you along this journey. Um, a big thing that happened to me was that when I was getting started, I thought I was going to do something with uh, air traffic control. I was getting in contact with several airports with their air traffic control offices and trying to do that part of navigation. But what ended up happening was I got the Northrop Grumman internship, which I think is much cooler. So. The big thing that you can do is not going in with a clear, defined thing that you want to do. Let it shape you. Let it take you on a journey. It's, it's an incredible ride. I, I've learned so much over my internship that I'm just amazed. Um, questions? I actually got to, um, they don't let you take photos in Northrop Grumman because a lot of what they do is um, sensitive to the government, a lot of it is like top secret, but they actually took me behind the walls and I got to see some of the new stuff that's being built. Like I got to see the fiber optic navigation, some other stuff that I can't really 
can't really talk about, but it was very cool. So I actually got to touch everything, except for like the, the extremely sensitive stuff that nobody's allowed to touch. And I got to walk around their offices, and that was that was amazing. Right, could you tell us a little bit about the Civil Air Patrol? What's what's the role? Of, what's, what does Civil Air Patrol do? Right? Um, well, like I said, Civil Air Patrol is a uh, it's the Air Force Auxiliary, and their main goal is cadet programs, aerospace education and emergency services. So that means that they're uh, greatly involved with helping find downed uh, aircraft, helping find like lost hikers and whatnot. And uh, cadet programs is like uh, helping their cadets along their path. Like they have summer activities that you can do. Like uh, they've got pilot training where you can actually earn your uh, private pilot's license. And then there's aerospace education, which is teaching all about aircraft, all about how they work, all about navigation, all that sort of thing. And then a follow-up question. When you were teaching, you said you were one of your roles was to teach younger uh, students, younger kids, about um, aerospace and, and about civil air patrol. Where, where and how were, were you doing that teaching? Where, where are those? Uh, <coughs> Actually, on? every Tuesday night in Charlottesville, they have meetings that you can go to. Um, you can volunteer, you can go. And I've been in for a while, so I actually have a leadership role in that. Um, are you solely interested in the design, or do you, are you interested in flying too? I am interested in flying. Um, I was actually, I actually got the, I'm actually going to Embry Riddle next year for college, and I got the Air Force ROTC scholarship for that. So after college, I hope to be an officer in the Air Force, hopefully either doing engineering or as a pilot. What's the future in general? Where do you see it for the average paper? Do you see it in cars? Do you see what, what's out there? I yeah. see a lot of hands-off stuff. Like I was saying, the autopilot systems are big now. Um, they can actually uh, connect your vessel with uh, satellites, which is GPS, and they can actually track where you are. So there's, it's not all computers. They can see what's around you. They can adapt your path to what's going on around you. So Really, in the future, there's going to be no interface with the humans. They're going to input where they want to go, and it's just going to go there for them. <coughs> you uh, experienced that in Opus Roma, did you? I know you, you, you focus on aerospace, but just for the rest of the class, I'm quite sure they exposed you to all the things that they do more than just that because they specialize in pilot. For most people, don't realize that the cable and uh, the internet all right. the service that they provide. So uh, did you get to see any other, any other area of topics that they, they specialize in? Uh, well, this office is mostly involved with navigation. Um, Northrop Grumman is a large company, and they have many offices around the country. But this office is mostly specialized in navigation. So that's most of what I saw. Okay. 